So now that I've spoken so much on media bias, well, what kinds of bias are there? Well, it's very difficult to measure. We often talk of things like ideological bias, whether or not some media outlet is left-wing, right-wing, conservative, liberal, democratic, or republican. Um, but the way in which bias manifests itself is actually rather difficult to measure. Typically, whenever we speak of bias as both scientists and media scholars, we talk about these four different types of biases. Of biases. The first is called gatekeeping bias, and this is simply what is covered and what is not covered. Uh, what stories get on the front pages, what stories get on CNN, and what stories get no coverage at all. So the stories that journalists actually choose to cover is a type of bias, um, not simply the way that they cover them. Uh, speaking of coverage, coverage bias. What aspects of a story receive the most attention? Uh, in 2020, we've seen these uh, protests over police brutality. And so some media outlets might choose to cover more so the causes of these protests, police brutality and uh, calls for stemming racial injustice and law enforcement and the criminal justice system. Others might highlight uh, the property damage and the instigation of violence in some of these protests. Uh, both of these way are ways of covering ultimately the same story, but different aspects of the story. Statement bias is when, and this is usually what people are referring to when they speak of media bias, is when opinions are added to the actual facts. If uh, a news reporter reports on the facts of a story, for example, the uh, protests that are going on in major cities right now, and then adds their own statement as to whether or not they feel that these protests are good, bad, or adding some sort of political value, not adding some sort of social or political value. That would be an example of statement bias. And finally, selection bias. And this refers to the journalists themselves. Who's reporting on these stories? Where do they come from? What are their backgrounds? Journalists do tend to be more uh, politically center or left than their corporate bosses in a lot of these 24-hour uh, news networks such as Fox or CNN. Um, not to say that they are liberal or that they are conservative, but simply if you were to place them on a spectrum, the owners would probably be more right than the journalists. And journalists themselves are not very diverse. Uh, in terms of the major outlets. They tend to come from elite journalism schools. They tend to come from um, very similar backgrounds. And this all comes down to the fact that, again, media is largely a for-profit industry. Um, and it's thriving. It's thriving. And what is driving you know, the, the, the fight for profits is the fact that media is increasingly competing for niche markets. They're fighting with each other to uh, get, a, get a good stronghold on certain viewers. You know, when you have a built-in audience, it is easy to get into fist fights with other organizations that are trying to catch those same viewers. And because of this, um, a lot of times news outlets do cover things, cover stories that they think will attract their audiences. So coverage bias, for example, or rather selection bias, choosing which stories to cover. The decision that often motivates those selections is which stories they think their viewers want to hear about. Ratings determine profits, and that is what uh, drives editors to decide presentation and content. Ultimately, it's this competition for audiences with other networks that drive these different biases.
And if you already have these built-in viewers, if you can attract certain viewers with certain stories or with certain types of presentation, then it's a guaranteed market.